If you are using AI code generation tools today, you're likely interacting with them in a chat-based format. You send some messages to it, you get some answers back, maybe you make some changes on your own based on those answers that the AI is giving you, and you keep going on that cycle iterating. But there's another way you can leverage AI code generation tools, and that is via Agentic AI. Now, there's a couple of tools out there that you can try out and leverage, but the one we're gonna look at in this video is GitHub Copilot Edit Agent Mode. Now, if you're not familiar with that, let's do a brief overview before we jump into a demo of trying it out. All right, not too long ago, GitHub announced GitHub Copilot, the agent awakens in this release. Basically what that means is they now have agentic AI available in preview via GitHub Copilot, specifically GitHub Copilot edits. So the slight difference here is there's GitHub Copilot chat that you would interact with normally. And then there's GitHub Copilot edits, which is also kind of like a chat, but you let it make changes to specific files that you indicate it should be working within. Now, where the difference lies in the agent mode is that it will automatically make changes based on your input. Of course, it gives you a preview of the changes it wants to make, and you get to choose to approve piece by piece what you want to allow it to happen before it actually gets saved and confirming those changes. But it goes and does a lot of the manual work for you based on what you're trying to accomplish. As I mentioned before, it's in preview right now, so they're gonna be constantly iterating on this to improve it before they get to a full release. To get started with it, you even have to use a different version of VS Code, which is called VS Code Insiders. It's the one with a green icon versus a blue icon. Let me show you really quick. So if you go to code.visualstudio.com, link will be in the description below. You can click on the Insiders edition there and download that for your operating system. The cool thing about this is if you already have VS Code stable, the blue icon version of VS Code, you can install them side by side, no problem. They won't interfere with each other and you can switch back and forth between them seamlessly. Once you have VS Code Insiders installed and running on your machine, you're gonna wanna go to your settings and enable the agent mode for Copilot. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. You're gonna bring up the settings in Visual Studio Code. You can do that on Windows and Linux using Control Comma or on Mac Command Comma. And then in here, you can just search for Copilot and then Agent. And you'll see this one right here, Chat Agent Enabled Experimental, right? So you check that box and you're good to go with GitHub Copilot edits. Also, one thing to note with this that you may be wondering is you need to be signed up for GitHub Copilot. You don't have to be on a paid plan. You can actually use their free plan that just has a cap on the number of completions and things like that that you have to work within, but you can still leverage GitHub Copilot edits agent mode via the free plan. Now, the last thing to do to make sure we're fully set up, just in case you haven't done this already, is to install the GitHub Copilot extensions. There's GitHub Copilot, and then there's GitHub Copilot chat. Get those installed and set up in VS Code, and then they'll be available within your instance of Visual Studio Code, especially this Insiders Edition now. Now, once you have Copilot installed, you might have it available in a different view than what I have. So for me, GitHub Copilot chat is this icon here within my main sidebar, and so is Copilot edits. But for everyone, you should be able to see this GitHub Copilot icon in the top of the menu bar. You click on that, and you can choose to open up either one in that way. So in this case, we want to open up Copilot edits. And then the key here is to change it from edit mode to agent mode. Then when it comes to which models you want to use, you have the option between three, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, Claude 3.7 Sonnet, and then GPT 4.0. I'm going to go with the 3.7 Sonnet here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do really quick here, and I suggest you do as well, is make a new directory so that all the changes that are being made by this tool are encapsulated to that folder so we can keep track of those results. And I'm going to store it in this GitHub repository with the link in the description below. So let me make a new folder. All right, so I have a new folder set up and ready to use with this project. And I'm gonna prompt it with the prompt that we tend to use in all the videos where we're testing out these new models and tools that are out there. Although we're using the same model that we've tested out in the past, we'll see if we get different results. So in this case, we're gonna create a simple Node.js web app to be a note-taking application where we can create, update, delete notes. The key thing though, that we need to emphasize to GitHub Copilot and the model here is that we want it to be secure. So we wanna test the results of this to see how well it does in following best practices both from a programming standpoint and a security standpoint. So I'm gonna send that in there and see what it suggests with a completely fresh new project working. That was really fast. Let's build this application. So it's starting with a package JSON. That's how I would start my project too. That's cool to see. Generating edits for that. And you can see behind me now, it created that file for me. I didn't have to go do that. It did it. It's also created an ENV example file and now it's working on an app.js file. This is pretty amazing. All hands free. Look, ma, no hands. 
we see three file changes and you'll notice this little icon next to them. It's kind of a new icon that I've not seen before using this mode. It's basically a like changes that are happen that have happened kind of like in memory or cache somehow. I don't know the specifics of it. And then until I keep these changes, like click this button here, it doesn't really get fully saved as part of the project changes that I have here. And it's doing that for all these new files that we got going on. We got this it's creating middleware. We got six file changes already. Again, all hands free. I was just using the mouse, but behind the scenes, this AI tool, GitHub Copilot edit agent mode, which is a mouthful. It's doing all the work for me. And then of course I'm going to review it, make sure it looks okay and go from there. Something else of note here. Again, this is not a nitpick of GitHub Copilot or of Claude 3 7 Sonnet, or maybe a little bit of Claude 3 7 Sonnet because it's a newer model, but it's still leaning on, I guess, old trainings, old patterns when it comes to building out node applications. We don't need Nodemon anymore. We don't need any third party package to run tests that is built into the latest LTS version of node now. So I'm hoping that as time goes on and these things progress, that they'll start implementing more modern approaches to building out node applications. So hopefully that'll come soon. I was hoping that in three, seven Sonnet, that would be the case, but not anymore. And it looks like that. Whoa, sorry. The response hit the length limit. Please rephrase your prompt. So that's a new one for me. I've not seen that before, but let's check out what it's done. So it created a git ignore, which is nice. A note routes, auth routes, note controller, auth controller, note JS for the model, user, async handler, auth middleware, error middleware, logger, and app. All right, we've saw all that. So 14 file changes, but it looks like I reached some type of limit in terms of a context window with the model and therefore I got cut off. So I don't know if it's fully been implemented just yet because of that limitation. And then it's also one thing to note that's kind of a little bit easy to overlook, but there's similar code that was found with two license types and we can view the matches of that. So it's nice that it calls that out, but I'm not exactly sure how to parse this. It looks like it was actively writing this file too, maybe, because you can see little pieces as I scroll through getting added into this. And the other kind of odd thing about this, I'm not sure what to make of it when it tells me that I, there is similar code found with two license types, because in this case, we could see it's it's calling out like the dependencies package JSON. And of course, people are going to have similar code like that, similar package JSON. So it might be a little bit of a mistake that it's calling this out. In any case, I'm going to close that. I'm going to tell it to keep all the changes and then we're going to go review those and we'll tell it not done just yet, but let's take a look at the code that it did. So look how much it wrote for me. The package JSON, the app.js, which is the main part of the application. We have some utils, loggers. We got routes built in here, models, middleware, and the controllers. I think it might be done. I wonder if I can actually run it right now, or maybe GitHub Copilot agent mode can run it for me. So let's ask it. So let's say I'm a new developer here. I don't know what it just produced for me, and I'm not sure how to use it. Maybe I'm learning how to write and build a node application like this. Let's have it teach us. All right, so in this case, it's saying you'll need to make a few more changes before the application can run properly. We need to create a logs directory. That's that's a little interesting. Uh, create an actual ENV file from the ENV example template and install dependencies. Here's what you need to do. Uh, once you've completed, okay, so we need to create the logs directory, which I can do that right now. Let's, I'm surprised it didn't do it for me. I thought it, I thought it could do terminal commands, maybe because I didn't have the terminal up. Let's ask it, right? Can you handle those actions for me? Is it capable of doing that? I don't know. So it looks like it can't do that for me. I have to do this stuff myself. Not too bad, not, not a big deal, but I just thought it would be worth a try. Make dir logs, right? That's what it said to do. Good. Let's open up the env file. JWT expires in one day. That's a new one. I've not seen that before. Cookie secret, sure. JWT secret, sure. MongoDB, we'll leave that like that. All right, all that looks good to me. Oh, it created an env file for me. All right, let's keep that. It just didn't run the terminal commands. I thought it could handle that. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! All right, let's run npm install now. All right, npm install ran. One thing to note here, based on the dependencies, we're getting some warnings from npm themselves. So the CSERF module, which is used for helping mitigate the risk of cross-site request forgery or CSRF, they're recommending to use another package instead of that one. But this has been 
the de facto for so many years and therefore these models have been trained on that i believe and that's why it's still recommending that glob versions prior to version 9 are no longer supported that's interesting maybe that's like a child dependency and not a direct dependency in flight this module is not supported and leaks memory wonderful super agent please upgrade to version 9. outside of that i think it's okay let's double check the package json and take a look at what we have here are any of those direct dependencies? Obviously, CSERF is a direct dependency, which we could handle that and switching to another one. I think the other ones are, yeah, they're, they're child dependencies. So it's based on our direct dependencies, depending on those as child dependencies. So we're a little bit in a tough spot in terms of how we can handle that unless they have upgraded versions. This one has version seven, maybe we can upgrade to, which I believe probably relies on super agent that was mentioned in here like that right there. So anyway, we could address those separately, but I'm noting that as what the LLM, the agent, this tool has generated for us, it's relying on older outdated dependencies in a lot of cases that have these issues with them that we would have to manually address ourselves still. All right, so outside of setting up a MongoDB instance running locally or remotely, I'm gonna try running it and see what happens. So we're gonna do npm run dev. All right, so it looks like uh, NodeMon spun up the Node application using app.js and it's running in development mode on port 3000. Let's try and see what happens when we go there. Resource not found, which is okay for two reasons. One, we don't have a MongoDB instance for it to connect to, to store data. And two, that's probably not an API endpoint that's available anyway. If we look at the routes, well, if we look at app.js and how the routes are set up, we have auth routes, note routes, and those are under API slash auth API notes. So imagine if we try to hit API auth, we get a different response. Ah, connection refused. Oh, yeah, the app crashed. So that's the problem, but that's okay. We can address that. Are you sure about that? All right, so I went and actually got a MongoDB database set up and updated my environment variables to connect to that MongoDB and started running the application. So now uh, I can explore the API route and use my VS Code extension that I like to do to interact with REST APIs, which is REST client. And I created the request I want to do via this request.http file, in which case I can run different requests against that API. So I'll send a test request to see if I can get back the notes. We see I get a 401 unauthorized response back when I send that against the API. And that's because we are not logged in. Please log in to get access, right? So first of all, in order to log in, we need to sign up with a user. We have this auth sign up API that I looked at via the code. We look at auth routes here. We can see there's a sign up route. There's some signup validation, which requires a name, email, password, and then password confirm. So that's pretty new to see the AI generate that kind of code, but cool to see these checks that are in place to try and validate the input that's being sent by a user to the API. So we're gonna go ahead and send this request now. Let's make some room here and we get, okay, 201 created and it gives us back a token that we're gonna need. And we created that user right there, right? So now when I go to get all notes, I pass in that authorization header, bearer, and then the token. So the reason you need to be logged in is because we have this protect middleware, protects routes requiring authentication like this, which is happening there. This auth middleware JS file creates that function, that middleware function, and then the note routes uses that protect function. And that's what requires us to be logged in. And if we look at it, it's looking for the authorization header and then it starts with bearer, split it based on the space after the bearer, and then it gets the token that way, which is pretty standard. So if we send this request now, we get a 200 okay. And we could see it's just an empty array of notes right there so far because we haven't created any notes. But this is really cool to see that hands-free, I created a full blown note taking application or API rather, using GitHub Copilot edits agent mode. All right, so with that officially done and tested, I'm gonna tell GitHub Copilot edits that I'm good, that's all done. And it basically closes out that whole conversation and we can start a whole new one to make it do more changes, add maybe a front end to it from here and have a lot of fun working with this tool further. But instead of going and doing that right now and adding more code to this, what I wanna do is test the security of the code that was generated via this model and this tool. So for that, I'm gonna use Sneak. And to get started with that, you can go to the extensions marketplace within Visual Studio Code here, search for Sneak, 
install this one. And then once you get that installed, you'll get this new icon in your activity bar. You click on that. You're gonna tell it to connect and trust the workspace. When you do that, it should trigger your browser to open up to a new tab with Sneak to sign in. If you've not signed up for Sneak already, you can do so for free using any of these mechanisms that are available on the screen here. I personally go with GitHub. I click continue, you click on grant app access, and you're good to go. Once you see the screen authenticated, you can go back to Visual Studio Code. Also something to worth noting when you're using the Sneak extension is it may prompt you to trust the folder that you are currently working within. So you're gonna click on that when that pops up to say trust folders and continue. All right, then once you are signed in via VS Code, you come back over here and you'll see the scan results from Visual Studio Code. We have the open source security section, the code security section, and then configuration issues and code quality issues if there were any. But when it comes to our open source security, meaning our dependencies that we have via package JSON, one of the issues we have is in the cookie dependency, which is a cross-site scripting vulnerability that's found there. So if I click on that, it's a medium level severity. I can read more about this via this new tab that opens up here, understand how it's being introduced. It's via that CSERF NPM package, which is a direct dependency that we have here. And it'll be fixed in cookie at version 0.7.0 if we want to address that. Heading back over to the sneak extension view, we can look at code security issues and we have a low severity issue there in the auth controller. It says sensitive cookie in HTTPS session without secure attributes. So let's take a look at that to understand that a bit better. So in this case, uh, cookie misses the secure attribute. It is false by default, by the way. Set it to true to protect the cookie from man in the middle attack. So this is something we would wanna do whenever we're having the server set a cookie for the client to utilize the browser here. We wanna make sure we flag it with the secure flag. And what's cool about this is Sneak comes with deep code AI fixes. So in this case, if I wanted to figure out how to fix it, instead of me going to look up what would be needed in order to do that, I can generate a fix using deep code AI fix here by clicking the generate AI fix button. If I click on that, we can see it is looking over the code. It is parsing the symbols and here's the code changes that are being suggested. We have one out of five solutions that we can choose here. We can add the secure option here when we're configuring the cookie there. And it seems like that's pretty much always the option, except if you wanted to make it so that when you're running in development mode, you don't need to require that cookie to be secure when you're testing things locally, because you're not going to have probably certificates and HTTPS running locally. You can turn that on and off based on what environment the node environment is running in. So in this case, if it's production, it'll set it to true. Otherwise it'll set it to false. So that's a pretty nifty way to handle that if we want. So I'm going to tell it to apply that fix by clicking apply fix button here. Then I could see a preview of what that was doing, which is right here on line 99 within my auth controller.js file. When we set up this cookie here, we add that option of secure with the value being determined on this condition here. Now, if we head back over to the sneak extension view, we can see code security rescan the project for us and we no longer have any vulnerabilities found within our code. So that's a very brief and quick overview of trying out GitHub Copilot's agent mode using the Claude 3.7 Sonnet model. I hope you found that interesting and I'm curious, how might you use it? Can you see yourself using this agent mode and having it build out features and functionality for you? Or do you prefer to do the chat interaction and iterate on your project that way? Let me know in the comments below. I have one last message for you before you go, and that is to make sure you don't use these AI code generation tools blindly. This is a message that we've been conveying in a lot of our AI based videos because you don't know exactly what you're getting in the output from these AI tools. They can be introducing bad practices. They can be introducing vulnerabilities like we just saw in this example. So be careful out there. Make sure you have a human review the output of it before going ahead and accepting it or pushing it to production. On that note, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who can put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding, everyone.